Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. Today we'll be doing another installment in my Beginning Bitcoin series, talking a bit about how you can get started with the very basics of using cryptocurrencies. In a previous tutorial, I talked about how you can set up an easy to use mobile wallet using the Bitcoin.com app or the Coinomi mobile wallet. And today I'm going to show you how to use your Bitcoin.com mobile wallet to actually send uh, cryptocurrency funds to someone else. So it's fairly straightforward to get set up with a wallet and actually create a transaction and send funds, but it is a bit different than what a lot of us are used to in terms of online payments. So I'm also going to discuss what makes using cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin different and more secure than using something like a credit or debit card online. So when we want to get started sending funds to somebody else, we just need to start by opening up our wallet that we've already set up and uh, loaded up with some funds. So obviously, if you want to send money to someone else, you do need to have sent some money into your uh, mobile wallet using maybe an exchange or maybe by asking somebody who's already involved in cryptocurrency to send you some money. So using the Bitcoin.com mobile wallet, you can have multiple wallets for different purposes, maybe like spending or for a small business. And so you'll want to open up the actual wallet that you want to send from. Then you'll tap the send button at the top of the screen. Next, you want to manually enter the address that you want to send to or uh, scan a QR code. I'm a big fan of using QR codes because it makes the user experience a lot easier as Bitcoin addresses are still a little bit unwieldy as uh, the community works out the user experience there. So, for example, in the uh, text, ver text version of this tutorial, we sent a donation to Eat BCH, which helps uh, feed individuals in countries where uh, food shortages are an issue. And I just went on the Eat BCH website and scanned their donation QR code. Now, next is pretty important. Uh, if you're sending funds to somebody else, it's always a good idea to double check the address that you entered uh, before you actually create and send the transaction. In Bitcoin, there's no do-overs. You can't reverse a payment once it's been sent. So you always want to make sure that you're actually sending money to the address that you intended to. Now, Bitcoin addresses do have uh, checksums built into them. So if you maybe mistype a character, the uh, wallet will warn you that it's not a valid address. However, other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum don't have these checksums built in, and so you may need to be more careful. As well, there have been instances on PC and mobile wallets uh, where malware infections have actually sort of hijacked the clipboard. So when you go to copy and paste a Bitcoin address, it might recognize that and replace it with a malicious address uh, of the malware authors. And so again, it's just always a good idea to actually double check the address and make sure that it's the one that you intend to send the money to. Now, once you double check that, it's as simple as just sliding to send. So you will pay a small transaction fee and the size of that transaction fee depends on the cryptocurrency that you're using and what the network conditions are like with that cryptocurrency. Uh, and those go to the miners that help uh, secure the network and generate the new uh, coins that enter the ecosystem. So again, I think that that's a fairly straightforward process. There's really only a couple steps and uh, a lot of modern mobile wallet experiences uh, make the experience of sending cryptocurrency easier than dealing with the very first uh, couple full node wallets out there that required a little bit more knowledge to use. But uh, it can be a little bit intimidating to get started with these cryptocurrencies at first because the uh, mechanism of payment is a lot different than what we're used to using online through things like credit cards and debit cards. 
So I want to talk a little bit about what makes the Bitcoin system different than what uh, we're used to using on a regular basis. So with credit and debit card transactions online, these are really poll types of transactions. If you want to buy something from an online merchant with your credit card, they create an invoice for you and you have to give them private information, which is your credit card number. And then what the merchant does is it makes a request to the credit card company uh, through you know, Visa or MasterCard to pull the amount uh, that they requested from your account. So you're giving them information that has to be kept secure, your credit card number, and you're trusting the merchant that they don't take more from you uh, than what they quoted you. You're trusting the intermediary to uh, not you know, accidentally give away funds or uh, lose your private information. And so there's a lot of layers of trust in there. Uh, with cryptocurrencies, what we have is actually a push payment mechanism. So there's no private information that's ever exchanged with a Bitcoin payment. When uh, you buy something from an online merchant using Bitcoin, they give you a completely public address that you're going to send the funds to. That address could be uh, plastered on a billboard. In fact, the entire transaction data could be plastered on a billboard. And there's nothing private in there uh, that would cause a problem for either party if that information was seen or stolen. So they give you their public address and you create a transaction that uh, essentially proves that you own some amount of Bitcoin in your wallet and you send that transaction to the Bitcoin network for processing. Now with this system, there's no trust involved with any parties. There's no intermediary that processes the transaction uh, there, and there's no private information that anybody has to keep secure. So that's a really different type of system than what we're used to, and just the Bitcoin protocol is fundamentally more secure in that way. So this has been an overview of how to actually create a Bitcoin transaction to send funds to somebody. Uh, most other cryptocurrencies follow this exact same model, and it's fairly straightforward once you're comfortable using Bitcoin or whatever cryptocurrency you start with to try and use another one. Again, especially with these modern mobile wallet user interfaces, they just keep getting better and better and making it simpler uh, for people to onboard into the space. So as always, there's a text article on the website that accompanies this that you can walk through. And as always, thank you so much for watching.